Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. Um, the real question now is, how do we use Beer's Lampert law when we have a mixture in solution? Again, the problem that we were talking about before is what if we have a mixture of a red and a blue compound? If we look at the absorption spectrum of the blue compound here, we can see that the blue, it appears blue to us because it's absorbing mostly the reds and not very much of the blues get through. I'm sorry, most of the blue gets through. The red compound looks red to us because it has a ab different absorption spectrum. It mostly absorbs the short wavelengths and lets most of the reds through. That's why it appears red. If we're looking at the absorbance at some wavelength, let's say, how does this mixture absorb at 500? Well, as the 500 wavelength goes through there, it's going to interact with both the reds and the blues. So at 500, it's not, the blues aren't going to very, have a very high absorbance, but the reds are. That means the total absorbance at 500 is going to be the molar absorptivity of the blue times path length times the concentration of the blue plus the molar absorptivity of the red times the path length times the concentration of the red. Really simply, just the absorbance of the blue at that wavelength plus the absorbance of the red at that wavelength. So let's look at some real data and compare what would the absorbance of 500 be as opposed to the absorbance at 600, which would be the molar absorptivity of the blue at 600 times path length times concentration of the blue plus the molar absorptivity of the red at 600 times the path length times the concentration of the red. Notice that that would not be the same. The absorbance at 500 and the absorbance at 600, these two absorbances should not be the same for the compound because when the 500 goes through, it's going to be how much is this and that. All right, so here's some data. Given these absorbent spectra, the blue, once again, the blue is not going to absorb very much at 500, and it's going to absorb a lot at 600. The red is going to absorb a lot at 500 and not as much at 600. So, if we made a set of standards whose concentrations were, say, 1 through 25, and we had both blue standards and red standards, and then we simply looked at the absorbance of these compounds at 500 nanometers, because the blue doesn't absorb very much 500, you would expect the slope of the Beer's Law plot to be shallower than the slope of the red compound at 500, because the red simply absorbs more. Just like in any Beer's Law, we can find the slope of this. Now, I use pretty good numbers here. So, the slope of this line would be delta y over delta x, and the slope of this line we could figure out would be 0.08. So, we actually have the slope of that line, which is the molar absorptivity at that wavelength times the path length. 
So if I wanted to figure out what the total absorbance at 500 is going to be, that would be the absorbance of the blue plus the absorbance of the red, or the absorbance at 500 would be 0.02, the slope of the blue at 500, times the concentration of the blue, plus 0 0.08, I'm sorry, the slope of the red, times the concentration of the red. Let's just say for argument's sake, if the concentration of blue equals 10 ppm and the concentration of red equals 10 ppm, then we could actually calculate what the total absorbance at 500 would be. All we'd have to do would say this is 10 ppm and that's 10 ppm. That means the absorbance would be 0.2 plus 0.8 equals 1.0. I would expect if the concentration of the blue and the red were both 10 ppm, that the total concentration of the solution at 500 would be exactly 1.0 absorbance units. Oops. Anyway, summing that, that means the absorbance at 500 would be the slope of the blue compound at 500 times the concentration of the blue compound plus the slope of the red compound at 500 times the concentration of the red. We could do the exact same thing at 600 nanometers. If we looked at that, that means the absorbance total at 600 would be the slope of the blue at 600, which is higher. And if it was the same concentration, let's say 10 ppm, and the slope of the red times its concentration, then whereas this total absorbance was 1.0, this one would be 0.7 plus 0.15 would be 0.85. So at 500, the same mixture of 10 ppm of blue and 10 ppm of red at 500 would be 1.0 absorbance units. And if we looked at its absorbance at 600, it would only be 0.85 because it's really just the sum of those two things. Again, shorthand here, absorbance at 600 would be the slope of the blue at 600, which is steeper, times the concentration of the blue, plus the slope of the red at 600, times the concentration of the red. 
please note that this slope and that slope are not the same thing. This slope and that slope are not the same thing because molar absorptivity changes depending on the wavelength. That means if we have two different wavelengths, we have one, two, three, four uniquely different slopes. The two different slopes at wavelength one and the two different slopes at wavelength two. Four unique slopes, four unique constants. This is the way we use to determine the concentration of an unknown mixture by simultaneously solving at two different wavelengths. Let's look at a specific problem, and I think that's probably going to help a little bit here. Here's the way the problem looks. If an solution containing both blue and red compounds of unknown concentrations is studied by Beer's law, and this we don't know what the concentrations of the blue and red are, but we can stick it into an instrument and measure its absorbance at 500 and 600. At 500, the concentration is 0.96. At 600, the concentration is 0.88. All right. So, if that's the case, then we can write, based on these two equations, that the absorbance at 500 equals 0.96. That's going to be equal to the slope of the blue at 500 times the concentration of the blue plus the slope of the red at 500 times the concentration of the red. We already know these slopes from our standards. So I'm going to change my slope here into an actual number and say that the slope of the red, I'm sorry, the slope of the blue at 500 is 0 0.02. And that's going to be equal to the concentration of the blue. I'll just give call that B. Where B is the concentration of the blue at in ppms. We can do the same thing for the red now. We can substitute in for the slope of the red at 500. Oops which was 0 0.08 times the concentration of the red. If from the problem we found out that the total absorbance at 500 nanometers is 0.96. Then 0.96 is going to be equal to the absorbance of the blue, which is the slope times the concentration of the blue at 500, times, or I'm sorry, plus the absorbance of the red, which is 0.08 the slope of the red times the concentration of red. That gives us this equation. At 500, 0.96 is 0.02b plus 0.08 red. The absorbance at 600 is going to be different. The absorbance at 600 is a total of 0.88. 
that's going to be the slope of the blue at 600. times the concentration of the blue plus the slope of the red at 600 times the concentration of the red. See, the problem that we've had here all along is that we have two unknowns the concentration of the blue and the concentration of the red. And what we have to solve for is what is the concentration of the blue and what is the concentration of the red when their absorbances differ at different wavelengths. But the Beers-Lampert law therefore gives us two equations and two unknowns. 0.96 is 0 0.02 times B plus 0 0.08 times R, 0.88 equals 0 0.07 B's plus 0 0.015 R's. This gives us two equations with two unknowns. We can solve these simultaneously then, algebra ensues, to solve for what is B and what is red. All right, I'm not gonna tell you how to solve your algebra problems. Um, I know that you can do it on Excel. I know there's a lot of ways to do this, I kind of like the old fashioned way, which is substitution. So if we take the first one, 0.96 is equal to 0.02B plus 0.08R, then I can solve for what B is in terms of R. So if this is my first equation, then I can do 0.96 minus 0.02B equals 0.08R. I just subtract this from both sides. Then if I divide by 0.08, R the concentration of the red is 0.96 minus 0.02b divided by 0.08. Not very helpful on myself. But now we can substitute that back into our second equation and say 0.88 equals 0.07b plus 0.015 times 0.96 minus 0.02b divided by 0.08. Notice now by substituting the first equation into the second equation, we have one equation with one unknown, b. This is just a single equation that we can solve for what is B. And if we solve this equation, B is equal to 12. That means the concentration of the blue in the solution is 12 ppm. Now, we can take that 12 and we can solve for red by plugging that back into the first equation. We have this equation, 0.96 
And now we can do 0.96 equals 0 0.02 times 12. And the red is equal to 8 ppm. By solving two equations with two unknowns, you can determine simultaneously that the mixture has a concentration of blue is equal to 12 ppm and red equals 8 ppm. Let's go back and look at that equation one question one more time. The question on the test is, if a solution containing both red and blue compounds at unknown concentrations is studied with Beer's Law, and it has an absorbance, a total absorbance of this at 500, a total absorbance of that at 600, you can determine the concentration of the two species in solution simultaneously. That is the problem on your problem sheet. I want you to go look at it.